Welcome to the Thousand Nights and One Night. Now, when it was the eighty-second night, she said, It hath reached me, O auspicious king, that the wazir Dandan continued to bespeak Za'omakan on this wise, and quote the maiden to thy father, Bishu Barefoot's sister once went to Ahmed bin Hanbal and said to him, O Ayman of the faith, we are a family that spin thread by night and work for our living by day, and oftentimes the cressets of the watch of Baghdad pass by and we are on the roof spinning by their light. Is this forbidden to us? Asked Ahmed, Who art thou? I am the sister of Bishop Barefoot, answered she. Rejoined the Ayman, O household of Bishop, I shall never cease to drink full draughts of piety for your hearts. Quoth one of the sages, when Allah willeth well to his servants, he openeth upon him the gate of action. Malik bin Dinar, when he passed through the bazaar and saw aught he desired was wont to say, O soul, take patience, for I will not accord to thee what thou desirest. He said also, Allah accept him. The salvation of the soul lies in resistance to it and its damnation and submission to it. Quoth Mansur bin Amar, I made a pilgrimage and was faring Mecca words by way of Kufa, and the night was overcast when I heard a voice crying out from the deeps of the darkness, saying, O Allah, I swear by thy greatness and thy glory, I meant not through my disobedience to transgress against thee, for indeed I am not ignorant of thee, but my fault is one. Thou didst foreordain me to an eternity without beginning, so do thou pardon my transgression, for indeed I disobeyed thee of my ignorance. When he had made an end of his prayer, he recited aloud the verse, O true believers, save your souls and those of your families from the fire whose fuel is men and stones. Then I heard a fall, but not knowing what it was, I passed on. When the morning morrowed as we went our way, behold, we fell in front of a funeral train, followed by an old woman whose strength had left her. I asked her of the dead, and she answered, This is the funeral of a man who passed by us yesterday whilst my son was standing at prayer. And after his prayers he recited a verse from the book of Allah Almighty when the man's gallbladder burst and he fell dead. Therewith the fourth damsel retired, and the fifth came forward and said, I here will also repeat what occurreth to me regarding the acts of devotees in olden times. Maslama bin Dinar used to say, By making sound the secret thoughts, sins great and small are covered, and when the servant of Allah is resolved to leave sinning, victory cometh to him. Also quoteth he, Every worldly good which doth not draw near to Allah is a calamity, for a little of this world distracted from a mickle of the world to come, and a mickle of the present maketh him forget the whole of the future. It was to ask of Abu Hazim, Who is the most prosperous of men? And he answered, Whoso spendeth his life in submission to Allah? The other inquired, And who is the most foolish of mankind? Whoso selleth his future for the worldly goods of others, replied Abu Hazim. It is reported of Moses, on whom be peace, that when he came to the waters of Midian, he exclaimed, O Lord, verily I stand in need of good which thou shalt send down to me. And he asked of his Lord, and not of his folk. There came two damsels, and he drew water for them both, and allowed not the shepherds to draw fast. When the twain returned, they informed their father, Shuyab, of whom be peace who said, Happily he is hungry, adding to one of them, Go back to him, and bid him hither. Now when he came to Moses, she veiled her face and said, My father biddeth thee to him, that he may pay thee thy wage for having drawn water for us. Moses was averse to this, and he was not willing to follow her. Now she was a woman large in the back parts, and the wind blowing under her garments discovered the hinder cheeks to Moses which when Moses saw, he lowered his eyes and said to her, Get thee behind while I walk in front. So he followed him till he entered the house of Shuyab, where supper was ready. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of the day, and ceased to say her permitted say. Now, when it was the eighty-third night, 
she said, it hath reached me, O auspicious king, that the wazir Dandan re continued to zoo al Makan. Now quoth the faith, fifth uh, damsel to thy sire. When Moses, on whom be peace, entered the home of Shuyab, where supper was ready, Shuyab said to him, O Moses, I desire to pay thee thy wage for having drawn water for these two. But Moses answered, I am of the household which selleth nothing of the fashion of the next world, for what is on earth of gold and silver? But quoth Shuyab, O youth, nevertheless thou art my guest, and it is my want and of that of my forebears to honor the guest by setting food before him. So Moses sat down and ate. Then Shuyab hired Moses for eight pilgrimages, that is to say, eight years, and made his wage marriage with one of his two daughters. And Moses' service to him was to stand for her dowry. As saith the holy writ of him, Verily, I will give thee one of these my two daughters in marriage, on condition that thou serve me for higher eight pilgrimages. And if thou fulfill ten, it is in the, thine own breast, for I seek not to impose a hardship on thee. A certain man once said to one of his friends, whom he had not met for many days, Thou hast made me desolate, for that I have not seen thee this long time. Quoth the other, I have been distracted from thee by Ibn Sh Shibab. Dost thou know him? Quoth his friend, Yes. He hath been my neighbor these thirty years, but I have never spoken to him. He replied, Verily, thou forgottest Allah is forgetting thy neighbor. If thou lovest Allah, thou wouldest love thy neighbor. Knowest thou not that a neighbor hath a claim upon his neighbor, even as the right of kith and kin? Said Hasba, We entered Mecca with Ibrahim bin Adham, and Shikak al Bakai was also making a pilgrimage that year. Now, we met while circumambulating the Kaaba, and Ibrahim said to Shakik, what is your fashion in your country? Replied Shakik, when we are blessed with our daily bread, we eat, and when we hunger, we take patience. This wise said Ibrahim to the dogs of Balak, but we, when blessed with plenty, do honor to Allah, and when we are unhungered, we thank him. And Shakik seated himself before Ibrahim and said to him, Thou art my master. Also said Mohammed bin Imran, a man once asked of Hittim the deaf, What maketh thee to trust in Allah? Two things answered he, I know that none save myself shall eat my daily bread, so my heart is at rest as to that. And I know that I was not created without the knowledge of Allah, and I am abashed before him. Then the fifth damsel retired, and the ancient dame came forward, and kissing the ground before thy father nine times said, Thou hast heard, O king, that these all have spoken on the subject of piety, and I will follow the example in relating what hath reached me of the famous men of past times. It is said that Ayman Ashifi departed the night in three portions, the first for study, the second for sleep, and the third for prayer. And Imam Abu Han Hanfa was wont also to pass half the night in prayer. One day a man pointed to him out to another, and he walked by and remarked, Yonder man watcheth the whole night. When he heard this, Abu Hanfa said, I was abashed before Allah to hear myself praised for what was not in me. So after this he used to watch the whole night. And one of the sages hath said, Who seeketh for pearl in the deep dives deep, who on high would high robs his night of sleep? Al Rabi relates that Al Shafi used to recite the whole Quran seventy times during the month of Ramazan, and then in his daily prayers, quoth al Shafi, Allah accept him, during ten years I never ate my fill of barley bread, for fullness hardened the heart and deadened the wit and induced his sleep, and enfeebleth one from standing up to pray. It is reported of Ab Abdullah bin Muhammad al Shakra that he said, I was once talking with Omar, and he observed to me, Never say I am more God-fearing or eloquent man than Mohammed bin Idris al-Shafi. It is so happens I went out one day with al-Haris bin Labib al-Safar, who was the disciple of al-Muzani, and had a fine voice, and he read the saying of the Almighty. 
This shall be a day whereon they shall speak to any purpose, nor shall they be permitted to excuse themselves. I saw Al Shafai's color change. His skin shuddered with horripilation. He was violently moved and he fell down in a fainting fit. When he revived, he said, I take refuge with Allah from the stead of the liars and the lot of the negligent. O oh, Allah, before whom the hearts of the wise abase themselves, O oh, Allah of thy beneficence, according to me, of the remission of my sins, adorn me with the curtain of thy protection, and pardon me my shortcomings by the magnanimity of thy being. Then I rose, and I went away. Quoth one of the pious, When I entered Baghdad, al Shafai was there. So I sat down on the river bank to, to make the abulation before him prayer, and behold, there passed me one who said, O youth, make thy wazu obulation well, and Allah will make it well for thee in his world and in the next. I turned, and lo, there was a man behind me who came with a company of people. So I hastened to finish my abulation and followed him. Presently he turned and asked me, Say, dost thou want aught? Yes, answered I. I desire that thou teach me some one of that which Allah Almighty hath taught thee. He said, Know that those who believeth in Allah shall be saved, and who so jealously loved his faith shall be delivered from destruction, and who so praiseth abstinence in this world, his eyes shall be solaced on the morrow of death. Shall I tell thee any more? I replied, Assuredly. And he continued, Be thou of the world that is, heedless, and of the world to come, greediest. Be truthful in all thy dealings, and thou shalt be saved with the salvationist. Then he went on, and I asked about him, and was told that he was Ayman al-Shafai. Al-Shafai was wont to remark, I love to see folk profit by this learning of mine, on condition that nothing of it be attributed to me. And Shaharazad perceived the dawn of the day, and ceased saying her permitted say. Now, when it was the eighty-fourth night, she said, It hath reached me, O auspicious king, that the wazir Dandan continued to draw al Makan. The woman bespake the sire, saying, The Ayman al Shafai was wont to remark, I love to see folk profit by this learning of mine, on condition that nothing of it be attributed to me. He also said, I never disputed with any one, but I would that Allah Almighty should give him the knowledge of the truth, and aid him to dispread it. Nor did I ever dispute with any one at all, but for the showing forth of the truth, and I reck not whether Allah manifest it by my tongue or his. He said also, Whom Allah accept. If thou fear to grow conceited of thy lore, thou bethink thee who so grace thou seekest, and for what good thou yearnest, and what punishment thou dreadest. It was told to Abu Hanifa that the commander of the faithful, the Jafar of Al-Mansur, had appointed him Kazi and ordered him a salary of ten thousand dirhams, but he would not accept of this. And when the day came on which the money was to be paid him, he prayed the dawn prayer, then covered his head with his robe and spoke not. When the caliph's messenger came with the money, he went to the ayman and accosted him, but he would not speak to him. So the messenger said, Verily, this money is lawfully thine. I know that it is lawfully mine, replied he, but I abhor that the love of tyrants get a hold upon my heart. Asked the other, If thou go into them, canst not thou guard thyself from loving them? Answered Abu Hanifa. Can I look to enter the sea without my clothes being wet? Another of al Shafai's sayings, I'll accept him. O soul of me, and thou accept my reed, thou shalt be wealthy and of grace entire. Cast off ambitious hopes and vain desires. How many a death was done by vain desire? Among the sayings of Sufan al Thorar, with which he admonished al bin al Hassan al Sam. Salami was, Be thou a man of truth, and wear lies, and treachery, and hypocrisy, and pride. 
Be not indebted save to him who was merciful to his debtors, and let thine associate be one who shall disassociate thee from the world. Be ever mindful of death, and be constant in craving pardon of Allah, and in beseeching of Allah peace for what remaineth of thy life. Counsel every true believer when he asketh thee concerning the things of his faith, and beware of betraying a believer. For whoso betrayeth a believer, betrayeth Allah and his apostle. Avoid dissension and litigation, and leave that which caused doubt in thee for things which breed no doubt, so shalt be thou be at a peace. Enjoy beneficence, and forbid maleficence, so, so shalt thou be loved of Allah. Adorn thine inner man, and Allah shall adorn thine outer man. Accept the excuse of him who excuseth himself to thee, and hate not any of the Moslems. Draw near unto those who withdraw from thee, and excuse those that misuse thee, so shalt thou be the friend of the prophets. Let thine affairs, both public and private, be in Allah's charge, and fear him with the fear of one who knoweth is dead, and who fareth towards resurrection and judgment stead between the hands of the Lord of dread. And remember that to one of two houses thou art sped, either for heaven's eternal or to the hell fires that burn. Thereupon, the old woman sat down beside the damsels. Now when thy father, who hath found mercy, heard their discourse, he knew that they were the most accomplished of the people of their time, and seeing their beauty and loveliness, and the extent of their wisdom and lore, he showed them all favor. Moreover, he turned to the ancient dame, and treated her with honor, and set apart for her and her damsels the place which had lodged Princess Abrazah, daughter of the king of Greece to which he bade carry all the luxuries they needed. They abode there with him for ten days, and the old woman abode with them. And whenever the king visited them, he found her absorbed in prayer, watching by night and fasting by day, whereby love of her took hold upon his heart. And he said to me, O oh, wazir, verily this old woman is of the pious, and all her is strong in my heart. Now on the eleventh day the king visited her that he might pay her the price of the damsels. But she said to him, O king, know that the price of these maidens surpasses the competence of men. Indeed, I seek not for them either gold or silver or jewels, be it little or much. Now when thy father heard these words, he wondered, and he asked her, O my lady, and what is their price? Whereto she answered, I will not sell them to thee, save on condition that thou fast, watching by night a whole month, and abstaining by day, all for the love of Allah Almighty. And if thou do this, they are thy property to use, and thy palace as thy please. So the king wondered at the perfection of her resitude, and piety and abnegation. She was magnified in his eyes, and he said, Allah make this pious woman to profit us. Then he agreed with her to fast for a month, as she had stipulated. And she said to him, I will help thee with the prayers. I pray for thee, and now bring me a gugglet of water. They brought one, and she took it, and recited over it, and muttered spells, and sat for an hour, speaking in speech no one understood, or knew aught of thereof. Lastly, she covered it with a cloth, and sealing it with her signet ring, gave it to thy sire, saying, when thou hast fasted the first ten days, break thy fast on the eleventh day with what is in this gugglet, for it will root out the love of the world from thy heart and fill it with light and faith. As for me, tomorrow I go forth to my brethren, the invisible controls, for I yearn after them, and I will return to thee when the first ten days are past. Thy father took the gugglet and arose and set it apart in the closet of his palace and then locked the door and put the key in his pocket. Next day, the king fasted, and the old woman went her way. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of the day, and ceased saying her permitted say. Now, when it was the eighty-fifth night, she said, It hath reached me, O auspicious king, that the wazir Dandan thus continued to Zaw al Makan. Now when came the day for the Sultan's fast, the old woman went her ways, 
and after he had accomplished the ten days thereof, on the eleventh he opened the gugglet and drank what was therein and found it cordial to his stomach. Within the second ten days of the month the old woman returned, bringing sweetmeats wrapped in a green leaf, like no leaf of known tree. She went into thy sire and saluted him, and when he saw her he rose to her, saying, Welcome, O pious lady. O king, quoth she, the invisible control salute thee, for I told them of thee, and they rejoiced in thee, and have sent thee their halwa, which is the sweetmeats of the other world. Do thou break thy fast on it at the end of the day? The king rejoiced at this with great joy, and exclaimed, Praise be Allah! who hath given me brethren of the invisible world. Thereupon he thanked the ancient dame and kissed her hands, and he honored her and the damsels with exceeding honor. She went forth for the twenty days of thy father's fast, at the end of which time she came into him and said, Know, O king, that I told the invisible controls of the love which is between me and thee, and informed thee that I had left the maidens with thee, and they were glad that the damsels should belong to the king like thee, for they were wont when they saw them to be strenuous in offering on their behalf prayers and petitions ever granted. So I would fain carry them to the invisible controls that they may benefit by the breath of their favors, and peradventure they shall not return to thee without some treasure of the treasures of the earth, that thou, after completing thy fast, mayest occupy thyself with their raiment, and help thyself by the money they shall bring thee to the extent of thy desires. When thy sire heard her words, he thanked her for them, and said, Except that I fear to cross thee, I would not accept the treasure or aught else. But when wilt thou set out with them? Replied she, On the twenty, the seven and twentieth night, and I will bring them back to thee at the head of the month, by which time thou wilt have accomplished thy fast, and the, they will have had their course, and be free from impurity, and they shall become thine, and be at thy disposal. By Allah, each damsel of them is worth many times thy kingdom. By Allah, each damsel is worth many, many times thy kingdom, he repeated. He said, I know it, O lit pious lady. Then quoth the old woman, There is no help but thou send with them someone in thy palace who is dear to thee, that she may find solace and seek a blessing of the invisible controls. Quoth he, I have a Greek slave called Sophia, by whom I have been blessed with two children, a girl and a boy. But they were lost many years ago. Take her with thee, that she may get the blessing. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of the day, and ceased to say her permitted say. Now, when it was the eighty-sixth night, she said, It hath reached me, O auspicious king, that the wazir Dandan continued to Zaw al makan Quote thy sire to the ancient woman when she demanded the handmaids of him, I have a Greek slave called Sophia, by whom I have been blessed with two children, a girl and a boy, but they were lost years ago. So take her with thee. Happily, she may get the benediction and be like the invisible controls, will sue Allah for her that her two children may be restored to her. Thou hast said well, replied she, for that indeed was her grievous want. Thy sire gave not over finishing his fast till the old woman said to him, O oh, my son, I am going to the invisible controls, so bring me Sophia. Accordingly he summoned her and she came forthright and he delivered her to the old woman who mixed her up with the other damsels. Then she went into her chamber, and bringing out a sealed cup, presented it to the sultan, saying, On the thirtieth day do thou repair to the Hammon, and when thou comest out, enter one of the closets in thy palace, and drink what is in this cup. Then sleep, and thou shalt attain what thou seekest, and peace be with thee. Thereat the king was glad, and thanked her, and kissed her hands. Quoth she, I commend thee to Allah's care. Whereat quote he, And when shall I see thee again, O pious lady? In very sooth I love not to part with thee. Then she called down blessings on him, and departed with the five damsels, and the queen, whilst the king fasted after her departure another three days, till the month ended. When he arose, 
he went to the hammock and coming out, shut himself up in the closet of his palace, commanding that none should go into him. There, after making fast the door, he drank what was in the cup and lay down to sleep. And we sat awaiting him till the end of the day. But he did not come out, and we said, Hmm, perchance he is tired with the bath and with watching by night and fasting by day. Wherefore he sleepeth. So we waited till the next day. But he did not come forth. Then we stood at the closet door and cried aloud, so happily he might awake, and ask what was the matter. But nothing came of that. So at last we lifted up the door, and going in, found him dead, and his flesh torn into strips, and bits and his bones broken. When he saw him in this condition, it was grievous to us. And we took up the cup, and found within its cover a piece of paper whereon was inscribed, Whoso doeth evil leaveth no regards, and this be the reward of him who playeth traitor with the daughters of the king, and who debaucheth them. And we make known to all who fall upon this scroll that Shar Khan, when he came to our country, seduced our queen Abrazah. Nor did that suffice him, but he must needs take her from us and bring her to you. Then he sent her away in company of a black slave who slew her, and we found her lying dead on the desert sward and thrown out to wild beasts. This be no kingly deed, and he who did this is required with naught but what he merited. So do you suspect none having killed him? For no one slew him but the cunning witch, whose name is zat a -Dawai. And behold, I have taken the king's wife Sophia, and have carried her to her father, Aphrodite, king of Constantinople. Moreover, there is no help for it, but what we wage war upon you and kill you and take your country from you, and ye shall be cut off even to the last man. Nor shall a living soul be spared by death, nor one who bloweth fire with his breath, save he who crossed the belt worshipeth. When we read this paper, we knew that the ancient woman had beguiled us and carried out her plot against us. Whereupon we cried aloud and buffeted our faces and wept sore when weeping availed us not. And the troops fell out as to whom they should make sultan. Some would have thee and others would have thy brother Shavarkhan. And we ceased not to dispute about this for the space of a month, at the end of which certain of us drew together and agreed to repair to thy brother Shavarkhan. So we set out and journeyed on till we fell in with thee. And such is the manner of the death of Sultan Omar bin Nu'uman. Now, when the wazir Dandan had made an end of his story, Zal al makan and his sister Nuzad al-Zaman wept. And the chamberlain who wept also said to Zal al makan O king, weeping will avail thee not, nor shall aught profit thee, but that thou harden thy heart and strengthen thy stress and establish thy sovereignty for verily, whoso leaveth the like of thee is not dead. Thereupon Zal Makan gave over his weeping and caused his throne to be set up without the pavilion, and then commanded the army to pass in review before him. And the chamberlain sat by his side and all his armor bearers behind him, whilst the wazir Dandan and the rest of the emirs and grandees stood each in his divital stead. Then quoth King Za al makan to the minister Dandan, Inform me concerning my sire's treasures, he replied. I hear and obey, and gave him to know of the late king's hoards and monies, and what was the treasury of amassed wealth and jewels, and acquainted him with other precious treasures. So Za al makan opened his hand to the army, and gave a sumptuous robe of honor to the wazir Dandan, saying, Thou continuest in office. Whereupon Dandan kissed the ground before him and wished him long life. Then he bestowed dresses on the emirs, after which he said to the chamberlain, Bring out before me the tribute of Damascus that is with thee. So he was shown the chest of money and rarities and jewels, when he took them and parted them all amongst the troops. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of the day and ceased her permitted say, and so do I.
cease my telling for today until it be morrow.